this plant is a Rudbeckia lusineata, or a cut leaf coneflower. And um, the black eyed Susans are also a red uh, Rudbeckia. And Rudbeckia is named after a legendary botanist. Uh, Carl Linnaeus, I don't know if I said that right, in 1753 after his mentor, Olaf Rudbeck. The Lusineata, which is hard to say, is Latin meaning slashed or divided into narrow or slender lobes. And it's from the family of the Asteraceae which is uh, daisies and sunflowers. So you can see how tall this plant is. And I just randomly picked it out out of a catalog one year. I think this fence is six feet tall and you can see it's a little bit taller than that. So you can see the slashed. See, the petals are with spaces between them. And so they're divided and the lobes of the petals are thin. And this one is new, so it's going upright. And this one, where's the better one? I guess that one is um, older and the lobes are uh, falling down. Again, a new one. And over here, that one is a traditional coneflower. That's why they're called cut leaf coneflower because, um, well, I don't know, the leaves aren't really cut, but the lobes are. You see, I don't have this staked up. And although these stems are not very thick, they're actually very, very sturdy. And you can see some of the leaves. You know, people like to look at the leaves. And this actually, the whole thing, after it's done blooming, I cut it all the way down and it disappears into the ground, so I need to mark this one with a flag. And it comes back and grows this tall. You can see a bud there. There's lots of buds. It makes for a great cut flower, because you see this one here. Look how long the stem is, and you can cut it all the way back down there. And I pulled this one down so you could see it. But um, I cut this plant back actually um, all spring and uh, summer, at least through uh, July 4th. And I'll keep it cut back low. Um, and otherwise this would be actually like nine feet tall instead of six feet tall. Um, sometimes I've let it get that tall and I really, really, really like it being that tall um, in the picture window in the front of the house because I can sit down on the couch. I have some pictures I'll put on the website and um, see just this huge mass of flowers uh, in the uh, picture window. So it does spread slowly but it's easily divided. This one um, came off the one in the front yard but because of its height you really need to have a special place for it. When we first got it, oh, I, you know, my first digital camera is in 2001, um, 22 years ago. So over 22 years I've had this plant, um, not in this location, but in the front yard. And at first I didn't like it because it was so tall, but I've just grown to absolutely love it because it is, um, even though it's tall, it is easy to uh, take care of. Like I said, I just keep cutting it back. Um, and then um, suddenly you uh, let it go somewhere after July 4th and it gets these uh, masses of flowers and the butterflies love them. So here's uh, another one um, that I cut back a little more successfully. You don't, you see it's not as tall as the um, fence and look at this that one in the back is just getting going it doesn't get as much sun as this look at the mass of flowers and can you picture looking out your 
picture window and having this huge mass of flowers. Um, I just love it. So you can see, once again, it's not staked. And so it's very easy um, to grow. And I've never had problems with it growing. Let's look at these leaves. Whoa, look at that. That is much different than this leaf. Isn't that intriguing? Look at this one which is much different than the higher ones where uh, the flowers are coming out of. I don't know, maybe somebody can tell me why this plant has different kinds of leaves. You see there, it constantly blooms. There's a new bloom coming out. Now you'll see pictures on the website of this scene. We used to have a tree here, but the tree in the neighbor's yard fell on our tree and we had to take it out. But next to the tree was a very large um, arbor that you walk through to enter the garden. And next to that in this bed were these yellow flowers. These here were actually moved from over here. But they looked funny standing there all by themselves. And so um, because of the tree being moved, we had to change our whole look. But they do require some thought on where you put them. So they do work best, obviously, in the backs of beds. They do not work well in raised beds like those there. Um, so um, they have to be in the ground because of their height and in the back. And it really helps, I think, to have our white fence behind it. They just are so lovely against that white. Now, at the end of this flower bed, is its original location and uh, well I have some seed nests below it but um, the sedum have been down here about as long and you can see this is their original location and they've been here for 22 years and I have the picture window there this year I've successfully cut them down fairly low and so um, they're not really showing through the picture window, although I sit there on my laptop and um, uh, look at them through the window. You can see I got a ton of buds coming out. They definitely remind me of a prairie flower, and I always like the idea of prairie flowers. And these would be really tall in the prairie, really showy. They're bright yellow. And there's another one that's just opening up. So the lobes, you can see why they're named how they are. They're standing straight up. And then uh, eventually they do like this one here. Or that one. I love it. All my videos are linked back to website pages with information. So this one is going to have a ton of photos. So be sure to go back and look at those through the years.